AV1 encoding. Is that even gonna help? I'm gonna give you the short answer. It will, but not yet. And this evidence here will be enough to prove it to you. With how we're recording right now, this is how footage would typically look. Yeah, it's kind of looking like a yikes, man. It's looking like a yikes. But AV1 will look like this. Isn't that a million times better? This is almost usable. I'm gonna tell you right here, this footage is four and a half minutes long. It's under a hundred megabytes and it looked this sharp. Wow, pretty interesting. So you're like, what the heck is AV1 encoding? Well, AV1 is an open source codec. Whereas typically right now, we'll use H.264 to record things. And if you're feeling real balls, you use H.265, which is actually funny because it's a really high quality format, but I have a really low res PNG of it. AV1 is just kind of coming around to the mainstream. You can see the new graphics cards. So the NVIDIA 4000 series, the AMD 7000 series, and the Intel Arc series, the, the first gen Arc, all have built-in hardware AV1 encoders on. You're like, what is this fancy new thing that I'm, I'm getting? Well, basically you can get a lot higher quality footage at lower file sizes. Now, is it going to help? The, the answer is not yet because not enough things support it. With all the big tech companies like YouTube, Google and stuff really pushing for AV1 encoding, it's clear that obviously it's gonna help. It's just at this current moment, YouTube is in a predicament. Have you seen this video by Linus Tech Tips? He talks about that YouTube is toying with the idea of charging for 4K with YouTube Premium. That is pretty clearly because 4K videos are just big files. In order for YouTube to store those files, they need more space and they need more infrastructure to be able to make that happen. So they're just ha they're, they're toying with the idea of just having people pay for it. Now this video is kind of old at this point. It came out a month ago in October. Uh, I'm, I'm late, I'm late to the news and you guys are mad. In this video, Linus talks about how YouTube has this obviously hugely growing community on it because a lot of the world is actually just getting like mainstream internet. Like I know India is like very huge on the scene in the past few years have completely blown up with how many people can uh, actually get on the internet and that makes a lot more YouTube users, and that's a that's a big deal. Because in 2018, quarter four, they cracked two billion users. That is a number so high, you cannot fathom. With all of that, they have to store a lot of data. Like this, this is a chart of, of how much data YouTube has to store every year, or this is the hours of videos uploaded. Yeah, it's kind of going out the charts. And then not even to mention like there's people out there that just upload like 10 hour VODs of their streams on Twitch. It's just like, oh, Jesus Christ. YouTube has a data problem. Will AV1 encoding solve that? Well, it's in this tough spot. It's like AV1 is clearly a higher efficiency encoder. Um, but some are going to argue is like, oh, H.265 high efficiency video codec already exists. But in order to use H.265, you have to pay a licensing fee for every single user. And when you weigh the cost as a business, like if you're YouTube looking at this, it's cheaper to just store all of the, the higher file size videos in order to not pay these licensing costs. The AV1 codec is definitely going to help companies like YouTube stay afloat and be able to be sustainable. It's going to be technically like a band-aid fix because that data is just gonna build up again eventually. But they'll be able to cut down on the cost of this a little bit. I don't really think the AV1 codec is really gonna save YouTube for a while, because if you think about it, so many devices support natively H.264, which is the standard on the internet right now, but not everything supports AV1. So whenever you upload a video to YouTube, YouTube will have to make a copy of that video and render it out in AV1 so that everyone who uses AV1 can actually utilize the, the lower bit rate and possibly higher quality footage. So they're still gonna have to support the legacy devices that don't support AV1 encoding yet. So all of a sudden you're gonna have the AV1 compressed file, and then you're gonna have all the H.264 files that still exist, and they're gonna have to exist for a long time. And all the content that is currently on YouTube right now, do you really think 
with a chart that looks like this. If YouTube's actually gonna be able to go through their entire backlog of content and completely re-encode all their videos, it's not gonna happen. So AV1, maybe in like six years, is gonna be awesome. But right now, it kind of sucks. And I want to go a little bit more in depth with that because even for the user, I'm not bawling out of my mind right now. Okay, here is OBS. It is an open source software, much like AV1 Encoder. You guys know how great OBS is. And in this current moment, you see the new graphics cards are supporting like the new 4000 series, 7000 series from AMD. They're supporting AV1 Encoding. I don't have a new graphics card. I'm not going to be able to get one because they're expensive. Okay, and if you're buying a graphics card just to encode an AV1, it's probably not worth it, all right? So I have two options. I can use the SVT AV1 encoder, or I can use the AOM AV1 encoder. Now, both of these, obviously, I don't have a graphics card that can encode AV1. Both of these use my CPU to encode it. I'm just gonna show you some footage. Okay, so this is 1440p 60 FPS footage at 20,000 kilobits per second with AV1 encoding. Now, I'm just gonna play this. Obviously, it looks great. It looks phenomenal. This is probably too high of a bit rate than it actually needs. Um, I'm probably using too much storage with AV1 to actually make this good. I'm sorry, this video, the, the, the current format I'm recording right now is in 30 FPS, so that's the problem. But if you just see in the upper left corner, I dragged in my OBS window while I was recording with it. My CPU, which I have a Ryzen 9 5900X, so this is a 32 thread processor, just recording footage, is pegged at 60%, and sometimes you'd see it spike up to 80%, just recording the footage. I can't use it. So the only option I have is to record on my GPU, or to use X264, which is the old H.264 encoder. But why would you use that? Um, I, I recorded H.265 on my GPU. These are the settings that I use to record my footage. Um, I usually use HEVC, so it's H.265. And then I this one's different. I usually use CQB, so that's like the quality preset. And I usually set it at 24 and it looks great. Okay, that's typically how I record my footage. And when I'm recording my CPU, it, like, look at this, just, just compared to that other stuff, man, my CPU sits at like 1% because it's not using my CPU, it's using my GPU. And for all the people that can't, that aren't gonna get these new GPUs for probably years, I mean, most, I had my old GTX 1070 for like six years or something. A lot of people don't upgrade their, their systems frequently. And even your phones and stuff like that don't have hardware AV1 decoders yet. So it's you're in this this tough spot where even though yeah this is coming around it's going to take a few years for AV1 to become mainstream. And that's just the way that it is and we can't really change it. Okay? I wanted to show you a quick comparison to to actually see how different AV1 encoding looks from other footage. So I typically record in H.265 which is which is HEVC all right, so I have these three ones here. This is like if you're you were recording at really low bit rates for whatever freaking reason, um, or if you're streaming at a really low bit rate. So 2,500 is super low. I would typically be recording at like 20,000 on HEVC for like almost lossless footage. So obviously we saw this footage earlier. This is AV1 at 2,500 kilobits per second. Pay attention to specific things. So. Look at the, the tire thing here. You're looking for blockiness or anything like that. Look at the crosshair. You see how it looks kind of like fuzzy around it and shit. This is the best quality you're gonna get at 2,500 kilobits per second. So let's look at the one I typically record out. So this is HEVC at 2,500 kilobits per second. And like, look at the, the, the bluish stuff around it. That's like what you're looking at. Look at the crosshair. It still looks pretty good. It's actually still pretty usable. Um, so if you are recording locally and you're not streaming, you can use H.265 and actually get away with like actually the lower bit rates and stuff and get, get pretty good results. Like it, it overall looks pretty freaking nice. Um, and then where the quality really drops off and then just really shows this age because this thing is from like the mid 2000s is H.264. Like, yeah, this looks like 
This looks like junk. This looks like total junk. So this is H.264 at 2,500 kilobits per second. You can, it's weird. It's like you can see pixely blocks. It almost looks like it's a lower resolution. That's that's typically how H.264 will look at lower bit rates. So it's like, is AV1 great? Yeah, it it is, but you can't really use it, at least until you get a new graphics card. Or you can try to make your CPU just cry while you're trying to just simply record footage for whatever you're doing okay so like in my opinion i can't use av1 right now but i would love to use it but i use h.265 right now because it's a pretty good balance and i get good results with it and i can record with it on my gpu so that i'm basically like barely taxing my system because there's hardware h.265 encoders on my gpu i know you guys are all curious about av1 encoding and stuff but i feel like the more pressing question is like this whole video what mic have I been recording with? Has it been this one? Has it been this one? And for the real observant among you, has it been the little lavalier microphone that's been on my chest this whole time? Well, if you thought you were so smart because you thought I was recording with the lav, then you're completely wrong because this shit isn't even plugged in. I just wanted to bamboozle you. I really wanted to bamboozle you because this entire time, it's been the shotgun microphone from behind the camera.